So we have seen an internet connected wheelchair, a range of networking technologies to transfer data from sensors to devices of growing size and capabilities up to the internet network and the cloud. This is a typical application example of the Internet of Things or the IoT. Kevin Ashton would have coined the Internet of Things in 1999. At least that's what is describing in this RFID journal article of 2009. He recalls the 90s when Internet diagrams included servers and routers while missing the most critical of the routers as people. The Internet is about disseminating information, but people have limited time, attention and accuracy. We're not good at capturing data about things in the real world. Thus, the, the Internet of Things promise is about making us a little bit superhuman, superhero, helping us capture data from the real world onto the Internet. To do so, there are three key elements. First, physical things are identified on the internet via various technologies such as RFID tags, we find them in clothing, for instance, or QR codes. Second, a thing refers to any physical object attached to a unique device that can connect as well as send and receive data through the internet. And finally, the IoT extends the internet that we explored in the previous module a global network of networks. This video explores the requirements that emerge from all these connected physical things. Similarly to other aspects of the digital product, we aim to specify the criteria that will influence our choice of network technologies. We have a dedicated dimension for network related elements on the digital product canvas. Although this is the, the corner, we aim to specify further, the requirements emerge from all other canvas dimensions and layers. Thus, let's make a tool to navigate some of the critical questions we should consider. We start on the left side with the end user. What are the end user's characteristics? It looks like a very generic question but it can already help sketch our requirements. Will it be moving or stationary on the user or in the environment continuously or temporarily, reactively or proactively? Will it be used in a playful context or for a mission critical operation? What will they do with the product? All these elements, distance to cover, motion, climate condition, time of use are all very valuable elements to consider. As a designer, these questions should already be answered when reaching the stage of network requirements, of course. It goes hand to hand with the promise of the product. What must be delivered? What is critical for the success of the product? Without which there is no business or customers. On the operational level, how big the device should be and is it an essential factor? The electronic and the antenna required for some network technologies might not fit inside the casing of small products, for instance, or it could influence the shape and materials. From the business perspective, can we request the user to pay a monthly fee as part of their smartphone data plan or as a dedicated subscription? Can this cost be included upfront in the price of the product? Maybe data plans are not a, an option because the area or, or even the willingness of users to subscribe. Moving on the product behavior, we distinguish the conceptual model from the technical model. The former is about how the user understand the product and experiences it. It is essential to understand what is natural for the target user in the product context. Is the population mainly equipped with the latest smartphone and surrounded 
by connected devices, for instance, or, or maybe the, the users and the expected operating conditions of the device are very diverse. Should the connected device stand as a single touch point? How agile actually are users with setting up their own network connections? The capabilities provided to the users influence the amount of network interaction. Thus, it is essential to estimate, for instance, the density of the devices connected to the network. How many devices per user and how many users? Will they interact continuously over time or at peak times? Suppose the product promise relies on the quality of the network infrastructure. In that case, peak times should be considered the reference density, even though it might represent only a tiny slice of the time. Latency also plays a vital role in the user experience unless responsiveness is not an essential part of the experience. The network ability to initiate and communicate in both directions also influences the user experience. Do we need a two-way channel? By design, some network technologies like LoRa only enable data sending and no receiving back. They can only receive data in response to the data they send. Think of a traditional television broadcast versus interactive television over the internet. That illustrates this two-way channel versus a one-way channel. The reason for such an approach might be to save energy or just to ensure security. When we switch to the technical perspective, we talk about interface and software. Here we can think about where software runs and for what purpose, for instance. On the operational layer, that means moving data around between the multiple pieces of software. We refer to the data rate as the amount of data transported across the network per second. How much data can we process locally? The density is also to be considered. Are data interactions distributed, continuous over time or peak times? For instance, a doorbell might only send a video stream when someone is at the door. The device, the physical manifestation of the product, is often the one sensing data. However, the smartphone, but also sometimes the gateway or local hub and the server, all can process data. The device might have minimal capabilities, but without relying on a network, it can process without sending to anyone. When dealing with data intensive sensors, such as cameras producing images, accelerometers and microphone with high frequency of time series, data might be pre-processed on the device to minimize the data sent to more powerful machines. It can be a trade-off between accuracy and network requirements, here again bringing us back to the product promise. What control do we want to offer to the user as a business? An essential benefit of connected product is collecting data about how the user is using the product. This implies that part or all data must transit through the cloud. On the technical aspect, we also find the question of interoperability. Are we trying to put our device in communication with other devices around? Maybe it is even a requirement. For example, a connected switch would need to talk to light bulbs from multiple manufacturers to switch them on and off. By the way, what is our development budget for this product? Because it might heavily influence the choice of network technologies here. On the contrary, is it beneficial for the business model to allow users to use the product in interaction with other companies' products? Maybe the organization's strategy is to focus on, on its own well-controlled product ecosystem. We will dive into the business aspect in detail in an upcoming model. We now reach the right side of the canvas and the infrastructure. 
we have already covered many questions which can lead to check what network infrastructure is already in place. What are users comfortable with? What are the needs for interoperability? Any existing infrastructure might be an asset to build on or a constraint that we need to deal with. What about the energy required for the devices involved? Can they be plugged into a power socket or should they rely on batteries? This is important because network communication can consume a significant amount of power. This is of course relative to the consumption of the product itself. Wireless communication might represent most of the energy budget of a connected speaker, while being barely noticeable for, let's say, a connected oven. The cost comes into play here as well. When a suitable network infrastructure is already in place, there might be a cost for using this infrastructure. Otherwise, we might conclude that a dedicated network infrastructure needs to be deployed. It is also essential to investigate whether the user have control over the network infrastructure and if we want to leave that in the hands. For instance, a product connected to a home Wi-Fi router is exposed through the settings defined by each household. On a campus, users do not have control over the infrastructure and have to comply with IT rules. We also touch on the responsibility layer. In some context, the priority might be to the security of the users, not allowing them to start a product remotely, for instance. What if the infrastructure fails? The internet, the local network, or the, the electricity supply goes down. What are the fallback strategies? What do we do when it fails? If privacy is critical, slowing down data transports with a robust encryption mechanism might also be an acceptable solution. Finally, some network technologies might not be allowed depending on the countries or the context. This might be for interference reasons, such as wireless technologies in hospital. An IT department might also oppose any infrastructure creating interference with the network technologies already in place. There might be security standards that some network technology cannot satisfy. A whole lot of questions here. There are certainly even more, but hopefully it gives you enough starting points to sketch out the network requirements for your digital products. Your network requirement needs to be formulated, justified and prioritized like a typical product specification. They should also be measurable. This measure can be a binary yes, no answer or a specific numerical value with units. We will explore these units in the following video and the terminology of network industry standards.